I gave Windows a spin over the weekend, and as you may have heard by now, it was terrible. Reinstalling SteamOS felt like getting back into your own bed after days of traveling. But why was it so bad, and whose fault is it? That's what I want to talk about today. Let's get into it. What's good, Deck Gang? I just want to say I am on to Valve. I know what they're trying to do here. Clearly, Windows on Deck is not consumer ready, and they know this. It doesn't even have audio drivers yet. This announcement that you can install Windows on Deck is basically just free advertisement for how good SteamOS is at what it does. Look at the Linus video. He said SteamOS performance annihilated Windows in his testing. Jason Evangelos' testing results on Twitter do nothing but bolster the power of SteamOS. And now we have Gardner having given a scathing review. Now, I'm only kidding about Valve's motives here, but this weekend did really serve as good justification for Valve creating SteamOS 3 in the first place. That said, IA Neo, 1X Player, and GPD devices all work pretty okay on Windows, so what gives? Is this Valve's fault? AMD's? Microsoft's? Who's to blame for this mess? The answer is a little bit of everyone, but I'm going to put the majority of the onus on Microsoft. Before I tell you why, let me tell you a little bit about my experience this weekend. Installing Windows was the easy part. I used Microsoft's own media creation tool on my thumb drive to create an installation media. I used my trusty anchor dock to connect the thumb drive. You can get to a boot manager in the BIOS by holding volume down while you press the power button. After you hear the chime, you can release the volume down button. I selected my USB and was off to the races. The Fox has more detailed instructions on how to install Windows, so I'm gonna include a link to that in the description. Suffice it to say, it was really easy but not easier than hitting the like button. If this video meets your high standards, hit that like button. And if you wanna stay up to date on all things Steam Deck, subscribe and set your notifications to all. Once I got into Windows, I needed to install the Valve provided drivers, network, Bluetooth, and GPU. These are not available out of the box, so you won't have an internet connection until you install these drivers. Once I had the drivers installed, the tweaking began. I had to install and configure Glosk in order to use the deck controls on non-Steam games. I had to install RevaTuner and HW Info for monitoring and FPS limiting. I had to change the power settings to actually draw the max power from the deck. And it's kind of challenging to convey to you that all of this took time because I didn't have a checklist that I ran through. Each step was a realization that something wasn't right and then downloading the tool to fix it and then configuring it. And after all that, the games performed generally worse. I had a lot less hard drive space for games, the mouse base UI was a pain, the controls were cumbersome to configure, and I had to alt tab to configure my performance overlay. And if I wanted to change the TDP, I'd have to install another tool for that too. Even if I booted straight to big picture mode and only ever played Steam games, it would take hours of tweaking to get kind of, sort of close to what SteamOS offers. Now, am I still going to dual boot? Probably. It was too much fun to be able to play Halo Infinite on this. But who's to blame for the Windows experience being subpar? Well, that's a really, really loaded question, and everyone has some responsibility. Valve is marketing this as a PC and saying that one of the benefits is that you can do what you want, including install Windows. AMD is responsible for their drivers, not just in the present, but for the next however many years. But in the end, I place the blame squarely on Microsoft. There are other handheld devices that are Windows only, and they are generally a better experience than Windows on deck, but I wouldn't say that they're good experiences. The bottom line is that Windows wasn't built with this use case in mind. It's not built for low res displays, navigation by control pad, or touch controls. Windows 11 actually addresses the last point, but it's built more for a tablet than a gaming handheld. And while Windows has excellent graphics APIs, it has otherwise not seen any innovation with regard to gaming usability in years. The Windows game bar is actually kind of nice in some ways, but it doesn't go far enough in my opinion. Windows doesn't collate your games across launchers for you, it doesn't have a built-in on-screen display or built-in frame limiters, and power management is frankly kind of a mess. Part of this has to do with the variety of hardware that can be used to build a PC, but also this use case I'm referring to. It barely existed before the Steam Deck. It was a niche within a niche. So if Microsoft was to address the problem starting today, what should they do? What can they do? What would you want out of a gaming-focused version of Windows? Drop a comment to let me know what you think. But I asked some other YouTubers in this space, and here's what they had to say. Gardner Bryant thinks it'd be really tough for Microsoft to undo their tangled web and make a gaming-optimized version of Windows. When I asked him what he would want out of a gaming-focused version, he said, quote, I wouldn't. Windows would need to be completely retooled from the ground up. 
it would need to completely ditch its current paradigm of windowing and min-maximizing. It would need a competitor like SteamOS that only allows focus to be given to one application. But SteamOS is a better Windows than Windows, and I'm quite happy with that as is. The Fox has been using GPD devices since basically day one, so when I asked him this question, he said that he would want, quote, what GPD already makes, devices that have keyboards and mice. If we're talking about a Steam BPM for Windows, you can already do that now. But I don't really have an issue with Windows, it's just that the Steam Deck isn't good on Windows. The Ioneo isn't either. Russ from Retro Game Core has thoughts that mirror mine. He says simply, for me, a gaming focused version of Windows needs to have a user interface that is 100% navigable using just a controller. It should feel like a true gaming OS, like on a home console, otherwise the experience feels slapped together. High Tech Low Life has some smart and solid bullet points. Number one, disable telemetry. Number two, delete bloat. Number three, have a unified UI that can support all the game launchers including the Xbox app. And number four, it doesn't auto-update at the same frequency as just regular Windows. I like it. And finally, Jason Evangelo from Linux for Everyone covers nearly all the bases. He says, quote, I would say, look at the Alienware Alpha for inspiration. That was a PC console done right. It had its own 10-foot UI, suppressed all Windows nags and updates in the gaming UI, etc. A Windows handheld gaming UI would need to seamlessly and probably transparently allow installation and launching from games of all platforms. Integrating some kind of GeForce experience style auto config graphic setting would also rock. Not a remotely simple task to solve right now. The biggest problem with Windows for this form factor is all the legacy bloat that it inherits, as well as the UX just not being designed for a small screen. End quote. I couldn't have said it better. But there's one thing they all missed. Blades. Microsoft, this entire video was just my shameless way of asking that you make a Blades-based gaming OS for Windows. Do it, you cowards. Okay, it doesn't have to be Blades. The important thing here is that I believe 10-foot and handheld PC gaming is about to be a real thing, and as much as I'm enjoying Linux, I'd like to see what a behemoth like Microsoft could do in this space if they really tried. But also, it, it should be Blades. As a final note, reinstalling SteamOS was a breeze. I followed the instructions provided to create a boot disk using Rufus and re-image the entire machine. Some spots took a little longer than I would have expected, but when it was all said and done, I was back home. All right, if you think I said a lot of wrong things in this video and you enjoy telling me that I'm wrong, you might enjoy this pre-launch video where I warn about the harsh realities of AAA gaming on deck. Give it a look. Deck gang out. Goodbye.